It's a spaceship, all right, but not your ordinary everyday variety. In fact, you might say this one came out of the blue. It belongs to the Electric Light Orchestra, currently on tour throughout the country and here in Knoxville tonight. All right, hey, it's Rob, and uh, I'm going to talk about something today that I know you've been losing sleep over probably lately. It is the ELO backing track scandal from 1978. So uh, to get started, uh, I'll say that uh, I've got a special interest in this topic and a special fondness for the album Out of the Blue by the Electric Light Orchestra, or in this case, the double eight-track tape, because that's what I purchased back then, probably around 1978, early 78, I think, and um, paid 10 bucks because it was a double eight-track tape. They used to cost more. Regular eight-track tape was probably five or six bucks back then, but this had double the amount of music, even though this fits conveniently on a, a CD today. But uh, anyway, it was a double album. You folded it out. It had a spaceship on the inside. It was all very cool and exciting for 1978. Anyway, I begged my parents to go see this tour. They were not interested in the least. I was 11 or 12. And so I ran away from home over it. Uh, it was gone maybe 20 minutes and I came back. But uh, I really wanted to see that tour because on that tour, as you saw in the beginning, they had a giant spaceship which would hover, open up over the stage, kind of look like a big cheeseburger. And uh, the band would be playing inside it with a huge laser light show. I'm sure it was all very fantastic for 1978. Next thing I remember seeing is a news report saying that uh, ELO was being sued by some of the promoters because they were playing to recorded background tracks. So along with the live instruments being played up on stage, the guitars, the drums, all that kind of stuff, people were claiming that, oh, some of the strings and some of the keyboards and sound effects and things were being played along with the band and the you know band was miming or playing along to some of these things. I always assumed it to be the case. I thought, well, well, that probably was pretty difficult to do back then. But uh, turns out I've been digging into it, and I think I found the real story, which is maybe even more interesting. So um, nowadays, people play to backing tracks. I've got some musician friends complaining that, you know, everyone they go see now, they have backing tracks playing, or they don't know what's real, what's fake. I saw Pat Benatar recently. She had backing tracks playing. Although she had like some keyboard lines going in the background and they didn't have a keyboard player on stage. So, you know, if they didn't have the musician up there on stage and they wanted that part in there. Well, you know, uh, Pat was still singing all the songs and she sounded great. So, uh, like I said, this has become kind of commonplace to trigger these samples and play these little parts along, you know, with the band playing live. And uh, it's just kind of accepted. At this point, of course, there have been some screw-ups along the way. We all remember Ashley Simpson from a few years ago on SNL who got up and started singing, but the vocal from the other song had been playing, you know, underneath her when she was trying to sing. On a Monday... blamed it on her band, said her band was playing the wrong song, which I don't think was true at all. But uh, anyway, so these things can and do go wrong. And that's kind of the danger of having, you know, some part that is unchanging playing along with live musicians. The part's not going to change. The timing's not going to change. So uh, if anything goes wrong with the live musicians, you know, the part's just going to keep doing what it does because it's the part. Anyway, so as I looked into it, like I said, I assumed this to be the case for decades. Turns out it really was not. So when ELO went out to play and they were in their spaceship, they were just playing live. They were playing whatever they were able to recreate on stage. They had, you know, a couple of violas, violins, uh, you know, of course, keyboards, bass. Maybe they had a couple of guitar players. I don't remember. Definitely Jeff Lynn and a drummer. And so they had multiple musicians and they were, you know, basically recreating whatever is on this record out of the blue and of course all their hits from beforehand all that good stuff but um what happened was once this uh came out there really wasn't any live uh recording of ELO that had been released they were a very popular band so someone decided to put out a uh, VHS 
of ELO playing live, playing their Out of the Blue record on this tour at uh, Wembley Stadium, which is, of course, where they had Live Aid later on. And uh, the problem was when they put this, you know, uh, VHS tape out, they dubbed in some of the instruments from the record alongside of the concert to, you know, kind of support it, to beef it up a little bit. And um, that is what got out in the press. So ELO tried to respond when they were asked, hey, are you playing to backing tracks, which is what it sounded like to anyone who had bought this uh, VHS tape and popped it in their VCR and said, wait a minute, you know, that sounds just like the record. Well, they had overdubbed parts of the record onto the live recording. And when they were interviewed, <clears throat> they didn't want to jeopardize the sales of the VHS or they were misquoted or whatever. And the quote that got out in the media was, you know, we really were playing our instruments, but we were, you know, but we're playing along to the studio recordings. And they were talking about, in the context of what you hear on the VHS tape, but people thought they meant this is what they were doing live when you saw them in concert. Apparently it was not the case that they were not, you know, playing to backing tracks live. If you think about it in 1978, it would be pretty difficult. It'd have to be on a reel-to-reel. -reel. You'd have to have multiple reel-to-reels. You'd have to have somebody loading and unloading and spooling up reel-to-reel -reel tapes and starting them at the correct time, and stopping them, and rewinding, or pulling them off, putting other ones out. It would have been a lot of work. Today, of course, you can just trigger all this stuff on a laptop. It's no big deal. So for years, I thought, well, I guess they were doing it somehow, but as it turns out, they really weren't. Anyone who saw ELO, and I didn't get to see it, because instead I got to run away from home, and my parents wouldn't let me. But anyone who saw ELO on this tour with the big spaceship and saw them live, you heard only ELO, and nothing else, 100% live instruments. And the mix-up came when this uh, VHS tape came out later on, and there was some of the studio uh, instrumentation, studio recordings that were kind of overlaid on the live uh, version of uh, this record. They later fixed it. They released a DVD in 2006, which was only the live ELO, and it still sounds great, and you don't have any problem hearing it, but... Uh, whatever reason, they thought it would be better on this VHS to do it. And because ELO was misquoted or didn't want to really uh, jeopardize the sales of the tape at the time, it kind of made them sound like they were admitting to the fact that they were playing to these tracks live, which apparently they weren't. So now, after 45 years, hopefully I can clear up the air and say that if you saw ELO, you saw just what they were doing live and nothing else. And that, you know, this misunderstanding came along. Later on, like I said today, we have all these, uh, you know, people playing to backing tracks and samples, and you've gone through the Millie Vanilli scandal, which I had a personal uh, part in as well, because I plugged in the microphones at the studio, that was at Ocean Way Recording where I worked, and I set up the microphones when they did their press conference, and they admitted that they weren't really singing on the records, they had been lip syncing all along in concert, and uh, so that was my, my little part of... Uh, that historical moment there. But uh, anyway, all right, wrapping it up. So there you go. In case you've ever wondered about it like I have, apparently it's not true. They weren't playing to backing tracks, although people do that all the time now. And probably ELO does it now. But uh, in 1978, it was a different story, and they weren't doing it then. All right, later.